What's up, everyone? And welcome down to the vault again. And once again, I'm joined by my good partner here, Mr. Walt Morgan. What's up, Walt? Good to have you in the vault. I'm feeling heavy today. Heavy. Are you feeling like heavy metal heavy? Heavy metal heavy. Okay, so is the spider feeling heavy metal heavy today? He looks like he's heavy. It's a little hot. He's laid back today. And the reason why it's heavy metal heavy day is because the new Death Angel just came out, Humanicide. And we are very happy to talk about this Great title, by the way. Oh, I love that title. I love everything about this record. And uh, you and I were fortunate enough to get to go to oakland and have on the listening party at ale industries ale industries and uh listen to the record uh, they played it twice twice through and um i gotta say i i I think i like this one the best i mean i I liked uh, the evil divide i liked uh the dream calls for blood but Man, this one really shows the musicianship, and these guys are fucking A diverse album from them. Uh, Diverse, but heavy as fuck. This is a thrash record. This is Bay Area thrash at its best. It opens up and just kicks you in the face. But I just think, to me, the hills and valleys on the record uh, uh, have so much. The musicianship, uh, the production, the leads, the song structures, just you can just tell. It's my album of the year for right now this this band is really together they are hitting on all cylinders do they Um, ever make a bad record i don't think they do and this one's over the top mark sounds so great on it um we got to share a bus last december for a headbangers ball tour in europe with sodom and suicidal angels and us and death angel it's like uh i don't know candy and more candy on top man we just the bands click really well together we really get along i guess it's our uh uh, go, growing up, you know, together, being from the right. but I'm just so, just so proud to talk really good about this record because it is an amazing fucking record. I love everything about it, you know. So and the way it's uh, you said sequenced, right? The way that they track list it, and one song goes perfectly into the next. It's uh, it, that that in itself is hard to do for some bands to get that part right. No, no, no. I think it's uh, sequencing is a big deal, and I think they did. Uh, really well on this and um i want to talk a little bit about the piano outro on a mortal be hated and i i love the way that song ends and then um it just comes right back and hits you right back in the face again into alive and screaming alive and screaming is just bam right in your face and um you get a couple of guest stars on here there uh, there's an alexi leho lead on there from children of bodum yeah so Look through that, and um, there's also a bonus track that comes with ten. But if you get the bonus track, uh, "The Day I Walked Away," it's uh, track eleven. Um, fourth record for this lineup. Yes, and it's the third in their Wolf trilogy, right? The three. Yes, it is. That's a, true. And I think that it. This uh, Rob had told us that it's going to end the Wolf trilogy ends with this album, so it'll be fresh on the next one. Wow, but this record is definitely fresh. And uh, I think Ted hinted, hinted in his interview with you, too. It has a lot of individual elements of all the band members. Uh, Will Carroll is a beast on drums. Beast. But it's his first. He actually uh, had, they help call it Will's song, and he actually put his first blast beats of uh, his recording career on it. Well, I'm very so fortunate. modern. I get to play with Will in my ACDC tribute band, ACDZ. So any of you Bay Area people who were spoiled because we only really play in the Bay Area get to see that. And I know that Will is a beast. He's one of the... Me and Tom Hunting talk about that all the time. He's just... uh, I know they call uh, Gene Hoagland the atomic clock, but fuck, Will Carroll is the atomic beast, man. And he knows a lot about music and history of music. very knowledgeable about about, about a lot of music and who played on what and what songs. And and it's just like when we were on the tour bus traveling and we'd be listening to songs and together and, you know, just different stuff that everybody was into. Absolutely knowledgeable about, you know, the the playlist that was going on and it just really injured. A lot of fun. A lot of fun with those guys. I'm so happy. I'm so glad for these guys. Nuclear Blast, Humanicide, Death Angel. Let's talk about Rob Cavastrani. Very underrated guitar player and writer, but a complimentary Ted Aguilar. And, you know, that... That has to be put together. You know, I gotta say, I, 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 I've always loved. I love Andy. I love Gus. I love Dennis. Those, there's, there's, those are my guys. I love that era of Death Angel. I will never forget that. That's the inception to me. But 
this this the, the these guys are fucking on fire right now it's like you know rob's playing better than he's ever played his leads are absolutely amazing ted's been in the band for 18 19 years now you know what i mean but although like you said they never even officially told him that he's in so. yes and you know and will and damien now i think 10 years each but it's just you know what a great bass player damien oh, man really good yeah i mean just solid all the way around i think and, all the bay area bands that are in that big eight category of thrash it's like they're all all-star bands really yeah, and 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 oc gator oc gator Mark's just amazing on vocals. I love his lyrical content. I love his writing. I love his a vocal, true singer. vocal harmonies. He's a true singer. and um, I love that. I, I, I'm, he's one of my bros. I'm glad to call him one of my bros. Hats off to you fucking guys, man. This is just a great record, Walt. Let me, let me just give you a quote from uh, Mark. He said, I wanted to write something that metal fans could really grasp onto, something dark and intense that makes sense. Right now, I think it's so apparent that the earth is in a sickened state. And that's uh, pretty much the topic of Humanicide, their album, right? That's uh, the the gist of it. But that's I think, the theme of the record, right. basically. Like, the, the you know, the theme. And, and, and I, 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 I love, like I said, I, I've listened to it uh, probably three or four times through now. I, I, I like the vocal hooks on it. I think he sings absolutely amazing on it. All of the players do. Um, uh, Rob has written another great record uh, and and these guys have just you know oh outdone themselves once again this album is makes great. the bay area fucking proud for us that's why we're bay area thrash is such a thing and this is why it's fucking 40 years later and people are still delivering the goods man and it's getting better i mean it's like, i agree you know, i agree the I bands agree. are more mature we're getting now better with age man i'm sorry but we are it's great. And also, we'll plug this beer that they make yep. at Ale Industries. It's uh, called a Caster of Shame IPA microbrew. And uh, it was a great little show, though. It was a, a little great private little party. Little, yeah, it was cool. A little private, not even that yeah. crowded, but it no. was perfect. It was invitation Probably only. Probably 70, 80 people, maybe, at, at tops. Right. You know what I mean? We'll listen to the and record. What I loved is that when it opened and the album came on and they played it, Rob went right up to the speaker and like he didn't have his guitar, but he got on his his haunches right in front of the speaker, and he was like really into that first song, which is a great opening track. Yeah, it is. But that's his uh, energy, you know. He, he doesn't even have his guitar. He reminds to me for like, like you remember screaming that? for vengeance or something like that. You yeah, know he was I mean? right into it. And, yeah, well, uh, we were all we were all kind of sitting right there where the PA right? was, you know. And so. then you notice that. Uh, the album has some good breaks in it, like that. There's a rock and roll song that we picked. That's out. what I'm saying. Hills and valleys. Other. This album is full of hills and valleys. It's still very heavy. It's very Death Angel. It's very thrash. And 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 again, like Walter and I, we only talk about the records we like, you know. And, and I'm not going to slag anybody's art, but this one, man, yeah. another one. Yeah, all bands Bing, have to me, play me, 100 me, miles me, an me, hour me. all the time, you know. When you have that break, it just means more when you go back into that heaviness, and that's what I love about it too. It goes up and down, like you said. So great album. Great we'll record. give it horns up to the tenth. Horns up to the tenth. Mm, that's, Anything that's hard else to get. on this? I don't know. I, well, one thing I want to say is when Death Angel plays, I was on a No Mercy tour with Testament, and I know what you say about being fun with these guys. But you know what? This is one of the few barrier bands in Thrash that when they're on stage, they're having fun. Smiles on their face, and you can tell. I think it's like the funnest band while they're doing their art on stage. That's what I have to say about that. But this album, yeah, you can't go wrong. Pick it up today. Go get it. It is Death Angel, Humanicide, out on Nuclear Blast Records. Leave me comments because you guys are already commenting on the Ted Algalar uh, interview, which I'm going to have more of this shit, guys. Believe me. I got the Bay Area all lined up. So just keep watching. Subscribe to my channel, and you're going to get more stuff like this. So uh, for myself and Mr. Walter Morgan, we will see you in Zetro's Toxic Vault real soon.